Claire Hernandez, and it's winning time here in downtown Los Angeles at the Ace Hotel. I'm on the red carpet, or the purple carpet, for HBO Max's new show, It's Winning Time, premiering Sunday, March 6th. How does it feel to play an iconic character, an iconic person in basketball history? What is that like? Man, there's some big shoes to fill, honestly. You know, Dr. Jerry Buss meant a lot to L.A., and he meant a lot to the world with the innovations that he gave to the team and everything. And it was just an inspiring American, you know? Like, he was sort of like of my dad's generation. Um, and this, just to look at where he came from in rural Wyoming, to being like the king of L.A. for 30 years, like, it's an extraordinary story, you know? And he really did, he, he saw entertainment in a bigger way than people saw at the time that he joined the league. <laughs> what was most challenging about filling those big shoes, and what did you learn about yourself? Well, you know, I learned that I have a lot in common with Jerry Buss, actually, you know? His sense of optimism and his belief in the power of positive thinking. Coming from a humble background, you know, I come from a working class family in Chicago, um, and I came out here to L.A. and had to kind of earn my spot out here. So, uh, yeah, and then there's some very emotional stuff that the character goes through, too, that, you know, both of my parents have passed away now, so some of the loss he experiences in the show was really intense. It was just wild, you know, like, I took this episode by episode, and I just tried to live in the moment, and that guy had some incredible highs and some really tragic lows, so... Uh, but all in all, I'd say he came out on the winning end, for sure. My last question for you. What would you say is going to surprise fans the most? Well, I think they're going to be surprised by the humanity behind all this stuff. You know, sports, to this day, sports tries to present a very heroic, you know, image of its players and the people in the league. And of course, of course they do. Everyone wants to be a hero. But the show that we made tries to go behind the scenes and show what it, what it feels like, really, to lose a big game or to win a big game or to, you know, the many challenges that these people are going through personally behind the scenes make for fascinating stuff, you know. It's a, it's a real roller coaster, the story of the Lakers, and I think people are going to be shocked at what Dr. Jerry Buss pulled off in that first year. It's nothing short of a miracle. How does it feel? I mean, to be an important role in the series, part of the Laker dynasty, what is the moment like for you? I mean, it's coming to fruition, you know, it's been three years in the work, and works, and for other people it's been even longer, and I'm elated, and I'm so excited for people to see the show, because I am very proud of the work we've done, um, and it's such a great story. Yeah. What role would you say the women of the Laker <laughs> dynasty play, especially, you know, in the beginning when Jerry first bought the Lakers? What role would you say they yeah. play? Well, I think Claire Rothman and, and Jeannie, they bring a lot to the table in terms of ideas to bring audiences into the forum, you know, because that's sort of the job they're given, but they, they come up with a lot of good stuff that then becomes sort of a staple of the team and the organization that they, they built. Um, but they're the backbone of the whole organization, in my opinion. How did you prepare for this role? Did you get to meet Jeannie at all? I didn't meet Jeannie. I haven't yet. Um, I decided not to reach out just because I didn't want any initial bias in any way. Um, mm. But hopefully one day we'll, you know, rub shoulders or something. Yeah. But it was mostly just um, interviews and podcasts and uh, and just sort of delving into who she was at that age, at 19 and 1979, and kind of looking at the world socially and politically as well mm -hmm. at that time. What did you learn about yourself as a person and as an actress during this process? Wow. <laughs> it's a big one. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, I learned a lot. I think about how to do my work the way I want to do it. I think really, you know, connecting with people is what it's, it's all about. And during COVID, you know, that was difficult, but that was sort of a pivotal for me. And so that's what I learned. How do you prepare for a role as <laughs> iconic as yours? Like, what do you do? Man, I, I, you really just, when you talk about making yourself vulnerable and just pouring yourself into the opportunity, you know, I feel like that's, it was like that, th those were some of the grounding things that I had to do every single day. And, 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 I, and I benefited from 
being surrounded by just a wonderful group of like writers, producers, other cast members, and so you know it just it, it, it takes a village for sure, and that's and that's you know, what this show is a, a village of people who are fans of of just what the Lakers have done for sports in the world, coming together to tell this story. Did you get to interview Kareem at all or spend I, some time I, with I, him? I did. My younger brother has gotten to meet him. Okay. Um, I haven't gotten to meet him, but I will say. I've been a fan since I was a kid. His autobiography, Giant Steps, was one of the first books I read wow. growing up. And so growing up in Southern California, he really was like the literal center of my favorite team. And so I, you know, I just, and obviously, and he, you know, he still writes, he still speaks. There's just so much that he's done across culture that, you know, I feel like I'm just one of millions of people that have benefited from, from his generosity. Yeah. Did it, how real did it feel, you know, filming, like, embodying that right, character? Right, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, again, brilliant set directors, uh, costume hair, they really just, I mean, it was like we were in the 80s, like, for mm. everything, all the details were, they were, were looked after, and so, it was, yeah, it, it, it just, uh, it, you couldn't help but feel like you were 19, in 1980. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to say that Laker fans who know the history have been, you know, saw oh, Showtime, yeah, yeah. are they going to be satisfied with the show? You know, I, I hope so. I think they will. I think they will. You know, I think, you know, part of, you know, part of what Showtime was, what Winning Time was, was, was having fun while you're doing what you're doing, right? And so we had a ton of fun. And so I hope people can capture that and also enjoy just the, the brilliant performances from everybody that's a part of this project. Yeah. I have to know, what was, what, how did you stay inspired for this process? How did you prepare for your role? Man, um, you know, just super excited and blessed to do what I do for a living, one. Um, I was very uh, enthusiastic at how well HBO and their family treated me, welcomed me into the fold. Um, I thought it was a very refreshing, nice project to be a part of. I love Adam McKay and all of his uh, phenomenal work. So um, just to be a part of such a project like this, I felt was just, man, a dream come true. Um, I wanted to ask you, from writer's room to camera, do you feel like your vision was fully realized? Absolutely. It is exactly what I pictured when I read Jeff's book. I mean, I think Jeff's book has been translated right onto the screen. I think, you know, Max Bornstein and Rodney and Adam McKay have, have you know, put it up there. Like, yes, it's eerie how similar it is to what I hope it would be. The cast is bigger. I never, honestly, like, I wouldn't have shot that high. Mm. I never would have thought we'd get like Sally, Sally Field and right. Jason Seal to play a part of Paul Weston and, 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 and some of these others, and I think we really lucked out in that department. That's awesome. Why this late? Why this era of Laker history? You know, there's so many great eras in the Laker dynasty. Why? Why start at the beginning? Well, when I was little, I lived in Orange County. So when I was six years old, my dad took me to the Westminster Mall to meet Magic Johnson you know, when he first came down. And it was a life-changing moment, you know what I mean? That was my first childhood hero, just starting to understand what sports is. And the best day of my life when I was a kid is if my dad would drive me up the 405 to go to the Forum to see a Laker game, to see Magic. Now, we would sit, my dad was the kind of guy who'd buy the tickets two rows from the ceiling when he could touch the ground. So it's, it's awesome now to be on set and walk on the court and stuff like that. But, so this is a team that I rose and died with as a child, you know? I, I cried my eyes out when they lost. Lost, you know, yeah. went crazy yeah. when they won. He, we used to run up and down the floor and pretend like we were Magic and Kareem. And, you know, <laughs> it was the best times of my life. So yeah. I went and read the book, not because I was looking for a show, but because that was my team. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then when I read Jeff's book, I was like, this is a TV show. Right. And I fell in love with it. So for someone, for Laker fans who know the history, have been, you know, similar to you, a ride or die fan, is there anything that's going to come up in this series? that might surprise them? It was for me. And I was like, I don't know that there is a bigger fan of the year and the team than me. And there was, that was what was amazing when I read Jeff's book. There was all this incredible stuff that I didn't know happened. You know, particularly with the coaches and the stories of how people got to the Lakers. And yes, there will be stuff, even the most hardened fan, unless you've read Jeff's book, there's going to be a lot of stuff that will surprise you that you didn't know. And you're going to be like, oh my God, did that happen? It's going to come up what's real and what's not. I say Google it, because the craziest stuff is all true. Mm. And for a younger viewer who may not, you know, be old enough to know the history, what do you think is going to stick out to them the most about this series? It's a good question. I think, to me, if I was a kid right now, the thing that would be most amazing would be, like, 
how the NBA was at that time. The fact that like the NBA Finals didn't even air live on television. They were taped delayed at 11 o'clock at night because they didn't want to interrupt the nightly news. You know, for people that are used to the NBA now being this multi-billion dollar industry and have never known it as anything else, I think they're going to be shocked to see where it came from and how it got there. Yeah, and last question for you. Do you think you captured the essence of Showtime? I do. I think, you know, there, in the trailer, there's the moment when John C. Riley says, turns to the camera and he goes, it's Showtime. And it gives me chills because I, 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 think, it's on, I think it's on film. It's there for me, at least, and I, I think I'm the toughest critic of it. What was it like from concept to writer's room to camera? What was the most challenging aspect of bringing the show to life? Well, I think all of us are fans and appreciators of the Lakers in that era of this history. And I think the, the biggest thing was trying to find access points into the reality uh, of what these characters, these people that we all know and love and appreciate, what they were really going through. Try to allow an audience to connect to these people in a way that was that was human uh, and that felt real and true to the events. For Laker fans who know the history, what do you think is going to surprise the most about this show? For me, because I'm a Lakers fan who knows the history, there are a ton of surprising things. You know, there's the story of Jack McKinney, and I don't want to give it away, but, you know, the, we all think of Pat Riley as the Lakers head coach from the Showtime era. It took a long and winding road to get there. There's the story of Spencer Haywood, who, if you're a basketball fan, maybe you know his name, but you don't know the incredible rise and fall of him this year uh, that we're portraying in our first season. So there's and a woman like Claire Rothman, who was the woman behind the show at the forum, whose name people may never have heard, except they all experienced her work. That is a question I wanted to ask just about the, the women in the Laker dynasty. What key roles do they play, and are people going to be surprised? Well, I mean, we all know that Jeannie Buss now is the owner of the Lakers, and yeah. a tremendous one. But in those days, she was a 19-year-old kid, uh, and it was her father who was running things. And she had this aspiration, and she followed in his footsteps, and it was a long and winding and complicated journey. So, yeah, I think the women in this show obviously are not playing the basketball, mm -hmm. but they're every bit as integral uh, to the story that we're telling. Right. And there's so many, you know, iconic moments of Laker history. Why start here? Well, this is the moment that the modern NBA was forged. That moment when Magic Johnson and Larry Bird entered the league is the moment where the NBA went from being a wonderful but third or fourth tier sport in this country whose ratings couldn't compete with golf to being what it is today, which is globally massive. You go to China and you see pictures of LeBron and Steph Curry on giant buildings. Uh, that doesn't happen without Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and this moment of the Showtime Lakers.